Online, she goes by the Brown STEM Girl, an ode to her foundation of the same name that encourages girls of color to get into science and math. At 13 years old, Elena Wicker is making history. Yes! <laughs> so she has officially been accepted into the University of Alabama Hearsing School of Medicine at 13 years old. My name is Elena Analema Porter. I'm 13 years old and in my last year of college. My goals right now are to definitely make it through college um, so I can go into med school because after I was accepted, it was the most amazing moment. Um, and just knowing that I've reached the goal of getting into med school mm -hmm. at this age. <laughs> <laughs> at 13. <laughs> was amazing for me. Um, because my goal was to become a viral immunologist, um, the study of viruses, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and really help communities. I wanted to get involved. I love to volunteer. I've done that since I was young, like when I was. You are young. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you are young. <laughs> I am the youngest African American to be accepted into med school. Um, and I will be attending med school either next year or the year after the next. And I will be graduating from college in May. I want to change the way people see girls. You know, because as a girl in STEM, not everyone thinks that, oh, she's a girl, it's STEM, no way. <laughs> yes, it can happen. There are many amazing women who have gone through terrible things. Um, trying to reach their goals in STEM and they succeeded and they brought so many other women with them so that's what I want to do. Lay your whole life prove that God is good <sighs> That is my prayer that my life shows that God is good. Alina, congratulations on this prestigious recognition. It's so well deserved. And for the members of the organization, you should know that not only are you celebrating Alina's many accomplishments or academic achievements, but you're also celebrating her desire to provide all those gifts, all those achievements for the betterment of others. It's such a blessing to be here on the continent of Africa and in Rwanda. Alina, that's your real name, right? Mm -hmm. You're an inspiration. You said you're 13 years old. Really? Right. How did you do this as a 13 year old? Um, I was homeschooled most of my life. Um, and I did a little bit of world schooling in Amman, Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, and over the years, I gathered my credits to um, actually graduate from high school. Um, and they called me out of the blue one day and said, you have enough credits. Um, would you like to come to graduation with your homeschool coalition and graduate and go to college? And I was like, yes, I'd love to. Um, we planned the date. I walked up on the stage. I was handed my diploma, and I graduated from high school. Um, and I think it was either that year or the year after that year that I started applying to different colleges. Um, and a few colleges that I had in mind were Oakwood University and Arizona State. I had a scholarship at Oakwood, so I went to Oakwood. And then um, after being accepted to Arizona State, um, I also got a scholarship at Arizona. So, I'm in both colleges with a major in biological sciences, biomedical. Um, and it's just been going great. What you're saying is so fascinating. Well, what was that moment when you knew you were so bright? Um, well, at the time, I wasn't really thinking about all of the things I was doing. I was just doing what I loved mm -hmm. um, and going about my journey through college. Um, but people started to recognize that there was a 13-year-old in, in college, and um, it was everywhere. Did you did you know early on 
I did. I did. What was it? She was just always smart, gifted, and she was always ahead. And it was just something about her that I knew that I had to nurture her gift. I didn't, at the moment, I didn't understand. Um, <laughs> until my mom explained that, you're in college and you're 13, do you know how big this is? Um, and I was a little bit shocked then and now I understand that it is a big deal. It's a big deal, a very big deal. Now that you are in college, what is the aim? What's, what's your goal? Um, well... I have many goals. One, I need to graduate from college. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that and um, heading into med school. But uh, while I'm in college, I'm also using my time to give opportunities to girls all over the world um, in STEM through a program I started when I graduated from high school um, called the Brownstone Girls. The girls you're talking about, are they girls in Africa or just girls in the U.S.? Um, with my program, I focus on girls all over the world, whether it is in Africa, um, girls of color from anywhere, from India, Iran, from the U.S., Mexico, everywhere. So um, what exactly do you do for them? I use them lots of opportunities and scholarships to mentorships and taking them across the world to learn STEM because that's the things that um, the people who supported me and my family have given to me and I wanted to give them the same because I wasn't just handed those opportunities. I had to work for them and there are girls out there who are willing to work for these things but they don't. They aren't given opportunities like I was given. What drives you? Um, what drives me is knowing that I'm an inspiration for people all over the world and that what I'm doing gives bigger ideas to girls. Um, that there's someone out there who is doing these great things. I want to do the same. That's what really motivates me. and It's also the supporters and the, the people that I look up to who are looking at me and saying, you're doing more than I've done in my entire lifetime. And I'm like, well, you're my hero. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, well, you're my hero. And then it, there's so many connections that I've made that I know I wouldn't have made um, without the other people that I've met and without the things that I'm doing. So what do you say for all those, regardless of age or, or whatever, who want to go out and, and like attain their dreams and go for what they want? Um, well, first I would say, don't let anybody tell you no, because yeah. there was a lot of people who told me no, mm. or that I couldn't do what I dreamed to do. Um, and I also had that support system. They were there when I needed them, and they gave me that support to say, don't give up on your dreams. You're in Kigali for the first time. Are you from Rwanda? I'm from California. Born and raised in California? I was born in California, um, in Fontana, but mm. I was raised in Texas. <laughs> you, meet, you, you moved from California to Texas? Yes. <laughs> Why would you move from California to Texas? Um, I think we, we loved California. It's a place to come and visit. <laughs> but we, we wanted to explore an adventure, and we ended up in Texas. Um, <laughs> And we kind of just stayed there. Everything is bigger in Texas. That's what we <laughs> um, And now we've moved and we are staying in Texas. And I think your parents should be so proud of you in terms of what you've been able to achieve at the age of 18. It is our distinct honor to present this year's Kuba Young Achiever Award to Elena Annale McWhorter. Please welcome me. Welcome. Elena will accept her award central stage. A round of applause, a round of applause. How does your parent feel anytime they see you? Um, I think my mom 
is happy. <laughs> She's um, happy that her daughter has done something and is doing what she planned for me to do because mm -hmm. the one thing she says is I want you to get good grades and show up in the world mm -hmm. um, and she said I exceeded that um, and I'm happy that my mom is happy for me because she's everything Aww. she she has done so much for me giving me opportunities and always being there so I'm glad is your mom a professor <laughs> She's actually not a professor. <laughs> um, as she says, she says as she's my mom, <laughs> but she's more than just a mom. Wow. She's, there's no words that can explain. Thank you to my mom. You are the absolute best. As a little girl, you are always determined to give me opportunities over things. So I want to know, yeah, how does it feel like being an African American living in America? Um, it feels great to know that I am an African American and I'm doing great things in America, but there are also um, big opportunities that are missed for African Americans in America because as African Americans, we don't get those opportunities that others get. And I think that's important for why I started my program. Um, because the girls all over the world and people of color all over the world, they deserve those opportunities. Um, and how I say it is, um, African Americans, we, we want those opportunities. People may think that we don't deserve those opportunities, but we work hard for what we have, and we definitely deserve all of the opportunities that should be given to us. What kind of opportunities are those? Let me, let me just look at you. Uh, yeah, I, I used to watch videos and I like your narrative. Thank you so How much. How you narrate African narratives. Wow. That's great. Wow. He's a great YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> Guess you know him. What am I? It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a pleasure and a honor to meet you. Because I don't know, I didn't know that I would meet you here in Kigali, but. Uh, Okay, that, that, that's impressive and very incredible to meet you here in Kigali. I used to watch his videos on YouTube. What, what can I say? Um, <laughs> yeah, keep it up, bro. Uh, 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 I like your, you know, we used to, to portray um, uh, hungry Africa, torn apart by war. Mm. Yeah, and we sometimes we don't talk about these beautiful things that are happening here and uh, my first video to see about Ethiopia you did it and uh, I was like hey wait I'm, I'm with all the Maya here I cannot talk with them <laughs> hey brother uh, I'm Evold that's my name okay and uh, you from which country I'm from Burundi Oh wow! You? I'm Stephen Murray. Stephen? Yes. From? Uh, I'm from the U.S., but I live here in Rwanda now. Wow! You moved to Rwanda? Yeah. And what brought you to Rwanda? Well, I was living in China during the lockdown. I started watching YouTube. Never watched YouTube before. So the first person I saw say anything good about Africa was Wadamaya. Wow. And as a result of that, doing more research, more research, I saw the video of you sitting in the gutter saying, look how clean this place is. <laughs> so more research and I ended up moving here. I'm trying to retire here and just started the store. What is it all about? Stan Africa. We are a uh, organization that, well, we're not an organization. We're a for-profit business. We take 50% of our profits and give it to local organizations that help young people. You're doing all that in Rwanda? In Rwanda, yes. Now the idea is for Rwandans to help other Rwandans. Well, one organization that we give to, um, they told me, you're the first person in Rwanda 
to give to our organization. Other people, everybody else that gives to uh, our organization is from someplace else. So that's the idea. Rwandans helping Rwandans. If we can grow enough, it'll be Africans helping Africans. Your message to Africans living in the diaspora? Come to Africa, visit, live, retire. Come to know the people on this on this continent. Don't don't just um, don't just go by what you see in the media. Come see for yourself, and you'll find that the, this is a great place, a wonderful place to be, wonderful people. Come come to Africa. How do you see Africa? Um, it's amazing. I love the experience and learning about all the history of my ancestors. Wow. <laughs> I mean, what were you expecting before you came in here? I mean, what, what the kind of perception that you have for Africa before coming in to, to Africa for the first time? Um, I wasn't thinking of, about moving much. I was just like, I'm going to go to Africa. I'm going to get the experience of what it looks like and and of my people. Hmm. <laughs> so I wasn't expecting anything. I was yeah. just excited to come and, and find out. And your first country in Africa was? Ghana. How was Ghana? Um, it was great. Um, I actually got to meet a lot of amazing people, including hmm. the Minister of Education. Wow. Um, I got to go to some of the memorials, um, W.E. Du Bois, and some others. And it was just an amazing experience about my history. Okay, and we are in Kigali filming this video. We have to continue. Tell me about the opportunities, the opportunities that you think African Americans are missing. Um, I think there are many opportunities that African Americans miss, um, but one of them, the one I focus on, is STEM um, and education because um, you see that there is a lot of education that is missed yeah. um, in Africa, and that's something that I wanted to fix myself. I want to come here and build a school actually. I went to build a school for girls in STEM so they can actually have a place to, to come and know that. In addition to just excelling academically, you've been pretty busy in terms of philanthropy and community work and you actually started a nonprofit called the Brown STEM Girl, right? <laughs> so tell us about that and what made you want to start it. My org organization, The Brown Stem Girl, creates opportunities for girls of color all over the world. My focus in STEM is healthcare and being an advocate in healthcare to underrepresented communities. I have received proclamations from governors in California and Texas declaring April 30th Brown Stem Girl STEM in the City Day. On this day, I will be hosting in Los Angeles, California, the largest gathering of brainiacs and smart girls in STEM for girls all over the world. How old are you again? <laughs> I'm 13. And you have a dream of building a school in Africa. Do you have the land yet? Um, I'm working. You're working on it? Can, 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 can you make me your partner? Because I want to help you make this dream come true. And we, if we have to raise funds to build a school in Africa, I'm going to help you. I promise you. It's a deal. Wow. That's incredible. Like, I'm... Jeez, I can't, can't believe it. Like, I feel I, like she's 13 and she's, you know, she's wise for her age. Too wise for her age. It's so inspiring to black girls like me what you're doing. So thank you so much for chasing your dreams. And uh, not letting, you know, what other people say limit you. Thank you. Elena Annalief Makarta is an American student who is the youngest black person to be accepted into medical school in the United States and the second youngest person to be accepted into medical school overall. She is also the youngest person to ever work as an intern at NASA. I 
heard you, you, you have your internship at um, NASA. Really? Yes. <laughs> I had my internship at 12 at NASA JPL um, in California. How and was it working in NASA? It was good. I was actually online um, because it was during COVID times. Um, but it was still an amazing experience getting to see all of the projects that we're working on and all the past projects that they had worked on. Um, then I was in love with rovers and I was like, I'm going to build my own rover to go to Mars one day. I want to build rovers, help build maybe even a spaceship one day that goes to Mars or even a planet that we haven't thought about yet. If there is life out there, she wants to be the one to discover it. We could be all moving to Mars one day. <laughs> and um, NASA was the first thing I, have ever, I had ever seen in STEM. So I wanted to be an engineer and that was the first thing I majored in when I went to college. <laughs> but it wasn't what I really wanted to do for the future. She now wants to be Dr. Elena Wicker, MD instead hoping to become a viral immunologist, a doctor that studies viruses. I think the viral immunology really came from my passion for volunteering and going out there and engaging with the world. So I made the change to medicine, but I always say that I have to keep NASA close to me because I keep my options open and NASA was always there. Wow. But why medicine though? Um, I I fell in love with healthcare. <laughs> um, I always loved helping people and I loved volunteering. And I think also the trip to Amman, Jordan, that me and my mom took to do world schooling, also fueled that because I saw that healthcare was needed in underrepresented communities and that we need more healthcare out there for people who may not be able to get healthcare. Mm. So, I started medicine and one thing that struck me was um, viral and I was like I want to go into viral healthcare and I want to become a viral immunologist one day um, so that's what I'm aiming for at med school. Mm. What, what will your final message to young black girls out there? Um, I would say never give up on your dreams because there were many people who told me no and that um, I was too young or because of the color of my skin that I couldn't do what I'm doing today. Um, and that's what I, I want them to know, that they can do anything that they put their minds to. It doesn't matter um, what skin color you have or what age you are. You can do anything because you are your only limit. Wow. I think for you, it does not matter. <laughs> because, I mean, I believe in whatever... I put in my mind. If I say I'm going to go to India and create a group of girls there in India who will change the world, I'm looking forward to that in the future and I know it's going to happen someday. Do you actually face challenges in what you do? I do. What are the kind of challenges that you face? Um, well, since I am an African American, hmm. there are some things that um, are offered, and some people may not know that they are, that we know that it's offered because we're African American, but we know that we we don't get the best of the best because of our skin color. But at least we we fight we fight to get those things. And but um, you're young, and uh, I don't think uh, your skin color needs to define you. In America, skin color defines it. She'd be going through racism at a young age. My mom told me that there would be challenges and that I'd be judged because of my skin color, but I knew that if I did what I did, I'd be changing the lives of many. So I just kept doing what I loved. For every little girl who has a dream, never give up on yourself. Little girl, you can. To every girl of color around the world, this is for you. The sky isn't the limit. You are your only limit.
Little Grower will forever advocate for you and create space for you. To all the amazing women who have left the imprint of their feet before me, so I would have a light and a path to see. I now leave my imprint for little girls like me. Where can people find you? Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, it's Elena on LA. But Facebook and Instagram is The Brownstone Girl. And you can also check my website, thebrownstonegirl.com. Oh,